Hey everyone, my name is Lauren Gaw and welcome back to another episode of Life Above the Clouds. Halloween is just around the corner, so I wanted to make my favorite Halloween candy, candy corn. I love candy corn. I know I might be the only person in the world that actually loves candy corn, but I always, always, always buy it for Halloween. So why not just make your own? Because you know exactly what's in it, and today we're gonna add cannabis. One of my favorite things about this recipe is that you can make anything with this sugar dough. So for fun, I made some blue and green candy corn, but you don't have to stick to this triangle shape. I also made this super cute little pumpkin jack-o'-lantern guy, but you can dye it any color you want and form it to any shape that you want. So let's get started. First, add your powdered sugar, evaporated milk, and salt in a blender or a food processor, and pulse or blend until it's well combined. You don't want any lumps because the lumps will show up in your finished candy corn. You can also sift your ingredients together, but I think that processing it or blending it is gonna give you a smoother texture in the end. Now add your granulated sugar, corn syrup, and cannabis butter to a pot on medium heat. Today I am using two and a half tablespoons of my cannabis butter. If you want to make a stronger candy corn, I wouldn't use more than two and a half tablespoons of cannabis butter in the sugar dough because it is going to change the final consistency. But always remember when you're cooking with cannabis that my cannabis butter and your cannabis butter could be completely different strengths. So start small. I would eat one candy corn and wait two hours to see if you feel any effects before you eat more. So stir your sugar mixture really well and add your candy thermometer. You want to bring the syrup to 245 to 250 degrees Fahrenheit. At that temperature, your finished product is still going to be chewy, but it's going to hold its shape when it's cool. If you want your dough to remain really pliable, which is fun if you're going to make other shapes, then you can heat your syrup to 230 to 235 degrees Fahrenheit. At that temperature, if you put all of your candy corn in an airtight container together, they also might lose their shape and they also might stick together. So if you're gonna cook your candy corn at a lower temperature, you can still store them in an airtight container, but put a piece of parchment paper in between each layer. Once you've reached your desired temperature, remove from the heat and take off your candy thermometer. Then add your powdered sugar mixture and vanilla extract and mix carefully until it's all combined. And then pour it out onto a piece of parchment paper or a silicone baking mat. Now let your mixture cool until it's cool enough to touch. And this can take 10, maybe even 15 minutes. Divide your dough into three equal pieces and then dye one piece yellow and one piece orange and leave the third piece white. Now starting with small pieces, I like to use a little handful about the size of a golf ball. Roll out your dough into long skinny ropes about a quarter inch thick. Of course, if you're making different sizes or different shapes, then just go for it and have fun. Lay your strands side by side, first yellow and then orange and then white and gently press it together with your fingers. Then cut the long strand into triangles. Of course, this way, not every single piece is going to have a white tip like your traditional candy corn that you're gonna buy in the store. So if you don't mind, or if you just wanna eat the extras, then that's totally fine. But if you want all of your pieces to have the white tip, then you can take your white and form it into a small ball, and then take your ropes of orange and yellow and place them around the ball, kind of like a target shape. And then cut into wedges. And that way, every single piece will be the exact same colors as your store-bought candy corn. As your candies cool down, they will harden, so you do want to work quickly. Now lay out all your candies to dry for at least an hour, and that's it. Now you have some fun, cute candy corn, or whatever shape that you want to do. Now let's try some of these guys. They're so cute, though. They're a little bit hard in the exterior, but once you chew into it, all that sugar just melts in your mouth. Oh, these are so much better than store-bought candy corn. Oh my God, these are so good. Give your candy corn out to friends as presents or keep it all for yourself or take it to your Halloween party. These are gonna be a huge hit. Thanks for watching this episode of Life Above the Clouds. Be sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and give this video a thumbs up and share it with all of your friends. And if you do make this recipe and make some fun shapes other than candy corns, let me know because I'd love to hear all about it. You can leave them in the comment section below or connect with me on social media. I would really love to hear from you. Thanks again for watching. Bye guys.